Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian and Jack with Some Men's Comics, and this is that video where we are discussing this comic book community market trends. That's right. This is that three up, three down, where we give you three up trends and three down trends going on in the comic community right this minute, right this week. Yes, we're a day different. And also, this week is a little different from us in our normal programming. We are premiering this video later, and there's not a bolo show this week due to kids' school, schedule conflicts. We're just shifting stuff around for this week only. But Jack, how's your week been? Because mine's been chaotic. Yeah, it's definitely been nuts. Uh, we've had to shift stuff around all week, uh, move meetings and all kinds of things. But you know what? Either way, no matter what's going on in life, the comic market keeps moving and we're seeing those up and down trends. And no matter what we've got on this list, I want to know what you guys out there in the Supplements Comics YouTube family, what you guys see as up trends, what you guys see as down trends, and not just what's happening right now, but where you see the market moving in the future. Let's see those in the comment section because I love going through and reading what you guys say. Thank you. I will say within that schedule shift, we have one positive that's coming out of it. There will be a future video very soon on this channel where last night, instead of when we normally record this video, we actually recorded an interview with Mr. Kyle Higgins. And who is Kyle Higgins, Jack? Well, Kyle Higgins is the Hollywood director and comic book writer um, who has been a major player in comics for the last 10 years. We're talking about... DC Comics with uh, Nightwing, Deathstroke, um, Batman, Gates of Gotham. But we've also got uh, work with Marvel with the new Rise of Ultraman, as well as doing uh, Winter Soldier previously, um, Cowl with Image Comics. And of course, he kickstarted Mighty Morphin Power Rangers with Boom Studios. So we had to talk about that, as well as bring on Steve from Burke's Family 54 Comics, um, great YouTube channel, and one of the biggest Power Ranger fans I have ever met. And he is the authority on all things Angel Grove, so we brought him on to help us out with that interview, and that will be premiering very soon. Yes, you could say we brought the lights down in that interview, and if you watch it, you'll know why. But... If you want to see it and you're not yet subscribed to this channel, subscribe, click that bell notification. That way you'll be notified when that video does hit this channel. And of course, we all have it on the audio version of that Simple Men's Comics podcast as well. But let's get into this week's trends, starting with the three up. This is a big one. People have been talking about this. They just launched a Kickstarter for it. But no, that does not mean the book is not going to be in comic stores. It still is. And of course, we are talking about Boom Studios, Matt Kent and Keanu Reeves, and we're talking about Berserker. Yeah, that's right. Now, this we know that Berserker is coming in stores uh, in November, and it is going to be probably the largest selling Boom Studios independent comic. Now, it seems like we are constantly giving that title to another property. You know, this was something that we saw with Once in Future and Something Stealing the Children, and then we saw it again with Seven Secrets, and then with uh, we only find them when they're dead. But when you bring on a writer like Matt Kent and then the star power of Keanu Reeves and a character that is truly designed for the actor and writer uh, and with a first look deal with Netflix, it has just everything put together um, that's going to get the comic market excited. And certainly we've seen that. Uh, we ourselves ha have announced that we have some exclusive variants coming for this title and we're very excited about this title. But this is a completely different thing going on in Kickstarter, very unique. And what Boom Studios has done teaming with Keanu is put out a, a series of graphic novels and trades. Um, so this really doesn't impact or negate or do anything to the, the current comic series. And these, these trades are going to ship in 2021. So you're looking at really an advanced look at getting um, to pre-order the entire series. And like if you're familiar with a lot of these like Kickstarter programs and in the, the kind of like exclusive tiers as you go up and up and up, a lot of it has to do with material. So you can get this, these things all the way to like gun metal, um, uh, you know, casing and boxing, just really incredible high end type things. And this has exploded uh, all over social media um, and people have really gotten behind this campaign so much so that it is currently sitting as we record right now Wednesday night at $406,000 with over 4,000 backers and if you pull this Kickstarter up one thing you will see is constantly the money just going up and up and up just constantly updating people are really backing this um, this I really think could be 
28 days left. This could be a million dollar Kickstarter. It could be like nothing we've ever seen in comics. And that's what happens when you bring this kind of star power on board. And the greatest thing about this, Brian, is people can kind of feel how they want to feel about it, but it's, it's trade paperback. So it's really about reading more than it is about the secondary market or flipping. Um, and it is creating a new revenue source for, you know, this could be the type of thing. You, it, it's not completely groundbreaking because you see what's going on right now with Scott Snyder doing a very similar thing with his upcoming image comic series, Noctura. Um, and we see what he's doing with that. And um, some, Big, I, I want to say smaller scale, but I mean, that one's at like 160,000, um, which is an incredible number in and of itself. But it, this is going to open up a lot of doors for, for creators. And here's the other thing, Brian, there is an option. There's a lot of retailers who got mad about this, feeling like the direct market was getting cut out. But there is an option for retailers, uh, you know, the Boom Studios put this out right off the bat, you know, Ross Ritchie said that you can contact uh, Morgan at Boom Studios, who is the connect that retailers deal with, um, who has the availability of offering all of these Kickstarter uh, books and inversions to shops directly at a discount. So this is something that they can get in store as well. So with all that, I, I really see this as nothing but a positive thing. So we got to put it on the upside here. Yeah, and I agree, and I, I think Boom is smart with doing this, right? Because we know Boom has been taking care of comic book stores since this whole COVID pandemic. And before that, even with their return, their guarantee return right. program they got going on. But with that pandemic, with the COVID going on, to do this and then put it on the retailers to have to sell, that, that could cause chaos, put retailers in a, in a hurt spot. So by doing it through Kickstarter, they're able to offer these boutique-type collectibles, these exclusive covers, these slip cases that you talked about, and not put – that onus on the retailers to have to sell it. If they want to participate, they can, but by doing it independently through Kickstarter, it lets those books, the, the buyers get that collectible, get those special exclusive type uh, versions of this while not putting the burden on retailers. So I think that's a good, good spot. And Berserker itself, Kickstarter, upcoming comic book, Keanu Reeves, definitely on the uptrend. But the next one we're talking about is definitely up as well. And we have talked about this we have just had the creators on for the third time, and we are talking about Kanto right now. But we're not just talking about Kanto 2, The Hollow Men. We're talking about this whole series has gotten re-energized with that release. Right. You're seeing the entire series get popular. We're seeing, again, the back, the back issues are, are flying. Um, I'm seeing a $100 sale on the first print uh uh, issue one we're seeing the second print for issue one from the first volume a book that was available at diamond as recently as just a couple weeks ago uh it was regularly on like those dollar sales from midtown is now a 20 dollar book um of course part of that kind of lines up with the current explosion of late printings that we're seeing going on on the secondary market where those prices seem to be astronomical and this kind of plays right into that um, but beyond that, we're seeing the the new Hollow Men series that you mentioned. That series well received, um, reader buzz on issue number one. First appearances in issue number one. That's something that's still being slept on. First appearances and cover appearances, and and on top of that, those incentives are incredible. Both the one in ten with the uh, amazing TMNT homage, as well as that kind of like stained glass one in twenty five look. Both of those are incredible, and. This series is one that I think is going to continue to build momentum. We heard on our interview, if you have not seen our inter most recent interview with the creators, um, I don't want to say some of the things that they've said to us privately, but let's just say Kanto isn't going anywhere. Um, Kanto's going to be around for a little while. This isn't uh, a temporary thing. And I think the way that the momentum for this is starting to build, it's getting to a point where I, that this is a major independent comics property. And, where the ceiling is, I don't know that we've hit yet. You know, I mean, I don't think we've reached that point yet. So certainly $100 seems like a lot for a, a, a first print issue one. But when you consider the low print run on top of the damage to the print run, 
Um, I think you've got a really rare collectible. And I think this is a, a property. We've talked about it seven seasons in a movie, right? We, th we think the world of it, certainly we've talked about it, that we think this could be a film franchise. This could be toys. This could be one that kids get behind. This could be Pixar's next big thing. Um, and it's it, either way, it's just an amazing independent comic, creator-owned comic, um, and one that we encourage, if nothing else, you check out the trade paperback and give a read. Right, and you mentioned that interview, and don't forget, during that interview, we announced the giveaway for this Canto. The, this is the one shot. This is the San Diego Comic-Con variant. This was donated by uh, Simple Man's Comic Community member, Lala Schultz, as well as probably one of the biggest Canto fans out there. So she was nice enough to donate this. We're doing a giveaway on that interview so go watch that we will announce the but we will announce the winner for it on next week's three up three down so make sure you turn, tune into that and the last one we're talking about on the three up portion when i saw this i was like man jack i haven't played this game since the 90s well it's not a game it's definitely a character we're talking about quake that's right we're talking about daisy johnson we're talking about chloe bennett we're talking about agents of shield um quake is a character who you can say what you want about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., right? And there have been high moments and low moments, certainly, with that series. Uh, and it, at the same point, this is a character that has really resonated with people and a character who um, seems like the casting has really matched the character and the character kind of fits in well with where the MCU is going. Um, if you're not familiar with Daisy Johnson, um, on top of her incredible powers and... and, and her prowess as a superhero quake she also has kind of come up in the shield system uh she becomes kind of a a shield leader um a leader of the avengers in in, in the comics through time and while not kind of like prevalent or heavily used she has been in some key positions like that before and i think that that's some place that they could go in the future i'm surprised that we're not seeing spikes right now on the first appearance um and that excellent sketch, second print, um, that again, with second prints kind of going through the roof, I would, I would think that uh, that Secret War se second print sketch variant would be the one that everybody would be looking for. But we recently heard news, Screen Rant supporting on it, so you're getting it from uh, major news sources versus the, the kind of like rumor clickbait kind of websites. But you're getting it from legit news sources that Chloe Bennett has signed up for future projects within the mcu and it seems like this is going to be a multiple project type thing it, she fits in the way agent colson fits in she fits in the way nick fury fits in she fits in the way scarlett johansson did kind of early in the mcu and i think that with her being young um and already kind of like finding her way on tv this could be a very popular character who could be getting exposed to a whole new audience if you look at that $15, $20 for our first appearance, criminally, criminally underpriced. So there's a three up portion. We're going to shift now over to the downward trends for this week. And this all kind of fits that pattern where we're talking about cycle. So each of these has been kind of, I won't say totally hot, but there was on an upward trend. But that first one we're going to talk about is Nemesis, which is tied to that whole Mark Millar, right or no? Right. So it's hard to even, this is one, um, we, we, Brian and I talked about this before we started recording. This and Quake, you could kind of, I could argue either side of the list for these because Quake books aren't really moving, but there was major news about her. So, you know, they should be moving either way. They're going to probably trend upwards. Um, Nemesis, there was major news about it. A Nemesis movie is happening. We've got, you know, um, directors and script writers put together um and you know this is going to be a thing with uh, co coming forward i believe from warner brothers um but mark millar put out that hey i'll have nothing to do with this um it's not part of my deal with netflix they're doing this without me um and because of that they don't necessarily have to take like a, a, a true adaptation of the comic and, I, and what I also think is kind of interesting is at, at Key Collector, um, who is really kind of an important like resource in the comic community, it's, it's a resource of weight. When they put out that alert, um, they actually kind of made a, had an anecdote in there where they noted that like last time something like that had happened, it was wanted, which did not help the comics, which I think is a very good 
or uh, secret service you know it's, i think it's a very good point um but i think it's gonna scare people off from nemesis so it, i don't know part of me says nemesis was a great comic um it's a comic with a lot of potential if it was done well as a film so part of me says hey if people aren't getting excited for Nemesis, this could be a great buying opportunity, which is what the down part of this show quite often gives you. But then part of me says, well, you know what? It could be Wanted or Secret Service where it really doesn't connect to the comic at all. And it just doesn't um, have any effect on the secondary market. And it's very, very, very hard to predict. So because of that, I can't put it in the upside. It's got to be sitting on the downside. But this is what the comment section is for, because I would love to know what people's opinions of Nemesis are. Super cool book, but will we get to see the book that we love on the screen? So you mentioned Key Collector being a good resource. I know a lot of people use it. I, I, I don't really use it that much, because from what I've seen, you see a lot of screenshots on on Instagram. You see a lot of screenshots on Twitter, whether it's good or bad. Either way, but what I don't like about it is it's not really news. There's a lot of hyperbole. There's a lot of theoretic in there. They'll put, oh, first appearance of so-and-so, and then it'll be like an, an asterisk or whatever, and it'll be like, Stacy Johnson's third grade yearbook said that this character is going to appear in this movie, and then it just starts selling copies. So either be factual or what's with the opinion, but if you choose which way you're going to be. I understand putting information out there, but that's just why I don't use the app. But the next one we're going to talk about on that three down portion, there's another book that was hot not too long ago, and we're talking about Champions. So Champions is getting ready to reboot again a new series. And it seems like Marvel is constantly trying to get... <laughs> it's just like a bunch of maxi series at this point. Yeah, they are really trying to get this team over. But I really believe, Brian, and I know you're a believer as well, that um, the market is really missing out. Now, I I know that there are some some big speculators out there, some of the YouTubers I've seen uh, championing champions. Um, so I don't want to say nobody's interested in it. Gary Nusser, I think, is one of them, right? Yes, for sure, for sure. I, I, he's been talking about it for a long time. Um, but it's one of those things where the market hasn't certainly gotten on board. Um, we have had champions, the, the no, original number one um, first appearance, as well as uh, the kind of like first revamp team that you kind of currently see them put together on top 10 shows before. And the Outlawed um, issue was awesome. Right. And we've talked about Outlawed and how we believe like that concept could really play off in a big way. Marvel continues to do things like if you paid attention to that Spider-Man, uh, Miles Morales 18 variant, the, the birthdays. Mar it's Marvel's 81st birthday. They celebrated it, um, Miles Morales 18, so you get the kind of reverse. And they, the, all of these champions characters are the ones on the cover. I really think that Marvel is, is really trying hard to show us that these characters are the future of Marvel, of Marvel Publishing, of the MCU. Um, it, you know, the Avengers weren't always like a great selling comic book. It, it's still not really a great selling comic book, right? And uh, while the Avengers are an amazing team, if we're being honest, growing up in the 80s, 90s, the Avengers were definitely second fiddle to X-Men. Um, and so the Avengers franchise worked because that's what they could make work. Um, they couldn't do the X-Men at the time, so they did the Avengers. And the Avengers worked great. Uh, but going forward, we're, we know that we're going into like young Avengers. Certainly, I think Champions is plausible. We've got um, the, you know, we know that like Viv Vision, Miles Morales, these are characters, uh, Riri Williams, they would love to do Amadeus Chow. These are characters that they want to do, they want to get to. Uh, and and it's, these are still characters that are affordable. And we're, we're talking about variant covers. We're talking about, the as you said, the various rebooted runs that at this point you, you could throw uh, into its own omnibus of just constant reboots. Um, and, and a number of first appearances of characters who are still really undervalued. But I think that the champions team, the lineup of the champions is one that people need to be paying more attention to. Certainly miles is getting that attention, but across the board, I don't think it's getting enough attention for what Marvel is certainly signaling to us. Yeah. I think it's also just the trend in comics you normally see. I mean, you know, teen Titans are well known, but 
you never see like the Teen Titans, the Young Justice. I'm a huge fan of Young Justice. I like these like younger team books, right? And it seems like whatever pops from them is usually like maybe a first appearance that appeared in one of the team books and not the team itself. I still a huge fan of Champions and I'm holding out. I think if they do something even as to Disney Plus, I hate to be one of those guys that's always like, well, if it's a movie or if it's a TV show, I think that's almost going to be what it takes though to really propel them. Great stories. It just doesn't have that, I say gravitas, but they're always going to go towards those bigger known teams. Like you said, with the X-Men or the Avengers champions is freaking awesome. And if you're not reading it, I definitely recommend you do so. And then uh, Gary Nusser will say the same thing. He's always put out good information for that. So uh, if you want to, you can check him out. He's got what the comic despective channel. Yep. Comic despective. Uh, definitely check him out. Uh, he, he's, he's always kind of ahead of the curve of big comic book reader, which is certainly something we advocate. Yes. And he'll happy to be, he'll be, he's happy to be the one to say, I told you so. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> but it's like uh, Top Gun, do not salute him, but you listen to him because the Pentagon listens to him. But <laughs> either way, so the last one, we have that three down portion. When I first saw this, I was like, what the heck is this, Jack? It's not even a comic. But we are talking about Harry Potter that has some comics with Harry Potter depictions in it, right? Well, yeah, well, what we're really talking about is they're, they're, uh, the comic market wants Harry Potter. Fiends for Harry Potter so yeah. much. You'll hear so. solicits like, it's like Harry Potter, but you never see a Harry Potter comic. Constantly. So this is something that Brian and I joke about behind the scenes a lot is we get a lot of times when we're getting these pitches from whether it's publishers or creators, it's always comparing. It's this plus this. Everything is this plus I'm this. I'm guilty myself. I do the same thing, but... But it's but it's it is the like way it seems like comics are pitched, yeah. um, and one of the things that people try to hit on a lot is is Harry Potter, and it, you, it's understandable, right? It's a massive, massive, massive franchise. Um, but the biggest kind of issue is the fact that J.K. Rowling has been very adamant that she wants no part of the comic book medium that she thinks she doesn't respect it. Um, she doesn't want the characters shown that way. And obviously, there's so many stories to tell. You look at Brian and I are big advocates of licensed properties. I'm, I've never seen a Harry Potter movie, True Confession. But I'm, I'm the bad guy. I'm gonna, we have so many new audience members. I'm going to get chastised for this. But here's like a little secret time. I've never seen an episode of Game of Thrones, and I have I've never seen Lord of the Rings. Those kind of those kind are not my kind of <laughs> of thing. Turn in your nerd card, bro. Right, right. <laughs> excommunicado. And you leave me no choice but to declare you excommunicado. Yeah, right. That's not. Those are just not. That's not my kind of thing. So, uh, but I certainly respect uh, fandoms. I have a daughter, my oldest daughter, who's like everything Harry Potter. Um, books, movies, uh, you know, all the merchandise. So certainly I, I, I understand. And there's a lot of stories that could be told in the comic form, similar to what they've done with other properties that kind of tie in and go in between movies or in between books and things like that. And, and Harry Potter isn't able to do that. And it's so much so that the comic market then tries to find these other appearances. So whether it's the DC Comics Love is Love book um, that had a Harry Potter depiction in it, which is, you know, it's a very loose comic reference or Mystic 15, which has hit those hot top lists at times. Because it seems like every, like, couple of years, people discover the, like, Harry Potter drawn in there and then get all excited um, for that book. So it kind of comes up and goes down. It's just some other kid with a Z on his forehead. But um, whatever for that is. Yeah. Let him, I don't know. But the unfortunate reality is we're just never going to get Harry Potter in comics. Um, and it's, it's so much so that, you know, every publisher is trying to create that next Harry Potter, um, that next book. And you hear that as, as that popular pitch. But really unfortunate because certainly you would think they would be a big success um, within, within the comics market. But not, unfortunately, not enough money uh, to get people who are already making the kind of money in the book market J.K. Rowling is uh, excited. Right, so guys, there it is. There's our three up, three down. Let us know what you guys think is hot. What do you know? Think it's cold. Also, if you are not subscribed to Two Brothers Comics, make sure you guys go over there and do so because we are about to announce two more variants through their channel, aren't we? That's right. That's right. We've got variants for two major creators, Image Comics creator-owned titles. Um, 
we're talking Chip Zdarsky and James Tynan. Um, if they're coming out with some heat with Image Comics, you know we want to be on board. So stay tuned uh, for Two Brothers Comics and see what uh, they are about to drop over on their channel coming soon. With that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack of Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys on the next video. Yeah, no, I'm sturdy like a milli rocket. Skin clear, still look young, Andy Miller knockers. Money in my pocket. Don't call me a money pocket, engine get to rocket. It sound like a thunder rocket. Yeah, I still love my baby even when it's toxic. Crazy like she Britney, but no, she don't shade the knock. No, Russell Wilson.